And we carry on with that story. In fact, Lula's victory dominating the papers today. And Dipti is joining us here on Saint. She's going to take us through it all. She's starting with the Brazilian papers, aren't you, Dipti? That's right. They're focusing on Jair Bolsonaro's speech, a brief speech, albeit, that was followed by presidential palace staff quickly uh, putting away that uh, pulpit that uh, behind which he was standing. And that's the focus of Foia de Sao Paulo today. That's a, the picture, perhaps a lot more significant uh, or symbolic uh, because it's on the front page, really. Um, uh, that seals the end of Bolsonaro's very controversial time in office. Uh, the paper also condemns his attitude in not conceding uh, a victory, uh, calling it an act of institutional cowardice. Uh, Odia, that's another Brazilian paper. They've got a very uh, heartbreaking um, juxtaposition of pictures on its uh, on its front page today. You have the uh, defeated face of Jair Bolsonaro down here on the bottom of the front page, but just above it is this picture here, and that is uh, a picture of dozens of Rio de Janeiro inhabitants rummaging through the trash uh, to find food after a fire at a food supply center. So uh, really a juxtaposition that speaks a lot about the dichotomy between those ruling Brazil and those living in Brazil. Stuart. Another election for you. Israel is kind of back to the future here. Election that exit polls, as we've been saying, indicating that Benjamin Netanyahu is on the cusp of a comeback there. Yeah, Netanyahu's uh, narrow lead after Tuesday's elections could signal a stunning Come back, and it is uh, unsurprisingly on the, the focus of the Israeli papers today. This is the conservative paper, Jerusalem Post, there uh, looking at how Netanyahu is poised to win. But what's interesting is that the Israeli papers are also focusing on another man that's Itamar Ben Gavir, the leader of the far right party and a member of the Israeli parliament. His big gains during the election, his party actually coming in, projected to come in third, uh, puts him as one of the big winners of this election, and he is the focus not just of the Jerusalem Post, but also Haaretz, the centre-left uh, paper, which in its editorial today uh, see in uh, Ben Gavir the premises of a, quote, right-wing authoritarian and religious revolution in Israel whose goal is to decimate democratic infrastructure. The editor is really pleading that Netanyahu will not get that majority, so uh, he's not able to form uh, what they call would be a nightmare coalition with this man here. This is a new one on me. Um, the Wall Street Journal today, it's uh, reporting that Saudi Arabia is on high alert. This is after intelligence is suggesting an imminent attack by Iran, Dipti? Yeah, Saudi Arabia has shared this intelligence with the US warning of an imminent attack uh, by Iran on Saudi Kingdom targets. Not a lot of details are given in this article, Stuart. The Wall Street Journal say it is a a Wall Street Journal news exclusive. Now, Saudi Arabia, the U.S. and neighboring states have, as a consequence, uh, raised their level of alert for their military forces. Now, according to this article, according uh, the Saudi uh, officials say this, these imminent attacks could be uh, an attempt by the Iranian government to uh, deflect attention away from domestic protests that we know Iranian officials have struggled to contain since September. Now, new date, new scandal that's played yet another sport. This time it's the uh, very lucrative sport of what on earth is this, Ditty? Corn holing? <laughs> corn holing. <laughs> that's right. I'm corn lost. holing. It's professional <laughs> corn holing, Stuart. <laughs> okay. Um, if you're like me, you will learn a lot from this article in the Wall Street Journal today. Uh, first, firstly, I learned that there exists a sport called corn holing. It started out like many great things in the American backyard as sort of a game between swigs of beer. Mm. Uh, it's now a rather lucrative and professional sport in which you throw uh, fabric bean bags at an <coughs> angled wooden board uh, about eight meters away from you and you get points for getting the bean bag on the board or in the hole in the middle. Mm. Well, at the ACL, that's the American Cornhole League World Championships a few months ago, a scandal erupted after the world number one doubles team were uh, accused of using illegal bean bags, so basically using bean bags that were lighter than they should be. But the drama continues because it turns out their opponents also used illegal 
bean bags <laughs> in that. So the sport is really in the middle of a, um, a cornhole-sized soul-searching mission right now. As the Wall Street Journal quotes, one person is saying, cornhole's dirty underbelly has been exposed now. Are you sure the beans didn't just pop out, fall out gradually? I, yeah. <laughs> anyway, uh, finally from Dipsy, the rapper takeoff from the group Migos was shot and killed overnight in Houston. Now, fans are paying tribute on Twitter, and as Dipsy uh, has found one video, haven't you, in particular? Yeah, it's when the rap, it's when the group Migos uh, ad-libbed over uh, Neil Diamond's very much not a rap song, Sweet Caroline, uh, and this was on an episode of James Corden's Car Carpool Karaoke. Take a listen. There's a really nice uh, moment during this video. Let's see if I can bring it up for you. It comes in just about a minute in, and the group raps over Sweet Caroline. So there you go, Stuart. I never thought I'd see a rap group rapping or, you know, ad-libbing to a very British song, uh, Sweet Caroline. Oh, very nice. Good tribute there. Good to play that on a day like today. Dipsy, thank you very much. Dipsy Laurent there with the uh, papers for you here on France. It's going to be going round and round in your head for the rest of the day. Isn't it? <laughs>